please welcome to your radio, Daryl DMC McDaniel. What's up, Rich? What's up, brother? Hey, thank you. What's thank- up, RXP? My favorite station ever. I don't, I'm don't. i like a kid in Candyland. I think I died today, and I'm in heaven. I've been waiting just to get up in this studio, man. You're the best station ever. Changed my life. Like, I have life-changing moments. This is one of them, man, for real. Well, that, that's that's amazing. I'm telling you. I was like, who are these people? Why do, why do they play good music? And why do you know, Rich Russo and Matt and there's the morning shows? And the, wow, they played a song that I never heard before. Wow, they just played Neil Young and then they played Rage and the Beasties. And the, who is this new band in the Black Keys and all of the stuff that you play? I love y'all. I'm happy to be alive because of y'all. It's good to be here. Well, Thank you for popping on stage with us Wednesday too. I but mean, thank you for having me. It's funny how things work, man. It was it was incredible. Mm-hmm. I, that was a really special moment for obviously that show that night and the radio station. And you, who knew that me and you sitting next to each other at a uh, panel, a music panel where we're judging unsigned music at a at college William, at William Patterson University yes. that would kickstart a bunch of great things like exactly. this. Exactly. But that's how it goes. I mean, it was, it's just one of the hey, Rich, hey, D, what's up? Hey, you want to come to a show and jam and do some <laughs> rock and roll? Yeah, let's go. That's the beautiful thing about rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, if B.B. King sees Eric Clapton, they're going, what are you doing? I'm playing a pub next week. I'm coming. And then they go play and people show up. That's that's what it's about. The creative, innovative spontaneity, if that's the word of rock and roll. It's a lifestyle. No, rock and roll is spontaneous and it's great. Now, before we play some songs of yours and chat Mm -hmm. away here and there, when... uh, Run DMC was announced for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I admit that, and I was on this uh, radio station, I was a little pissed. Mm-hmm. Not because Run DMC is not one of the all-time greatest artists in music history, but more the fact that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame glossed over a lot of deserving artists from mm-hmm. like a decade earlier to make this event more media-friendly. Mm-hmm. The mass appeal only started inducting Madonna, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, obviously, Run DMC. I just wondered why not just call it the uh, Popular Music Hall of Fame. I know hey, you're hey, a big, hey. big fan of rock and roll, as yes. we just heard. Yes, But when you were like thinking when you got inducted, like, wait a second, we're going to the Rock and Roll Fame, but bands like Kiss or Rush or some of the other mm-hmm. ones that sold out stadiums and millions Metallica, and millions, millions and millions of records. Elvis Presley. Earlier. Yeah. How are we not? How are we in this before these guys That's get it? What did you question. think? That's a great question. It was a great. First of all, it's inconceivable that we was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. First of all, second of all, it was it was just cool. Like we didn't. It was just cool being considered worthy enough to get in but then i had to think about wow we used to steal these people's music we used to sample it we used to rap and dj it into the streets in new york city and here we are being inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame but it was inconceivable i remember um in 87 we used to travel a lot because of raising hell and walk this way and everything. And we was always in airports. Prince was always in airports. We would see him. Go, we coming. He's going. We going. He's coming. And it was like '87. He just looked over at us. He wouldn't say too much. He was like, "I like you guys. Yo, go. Hey, good to see y'all." And then one day he's walking by. Us. He just said, "You guys are shooing for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame." And he kept walking. <laughs> Me, Jay, and Ron. We looked at each other like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Whatever. And he kept walking. But um, a lot of people was mad that Run DMC got in because we wasn't a rock band. Now, I can understand that, and I can understand a lot of groups, but, you know, James Brown got in, you know what I'm saying? But I think you got, it's not about, I don't think it's not about whether Run DMC was rock and roll enough. We did use the rock guitars. I think that was, yeah, these guys could come in and play and hang out with us because of the rock and roll element. I don't think if we didn't do Rock Box, King of Rock and Walk This Way, I don't think we would have been even considered you know, worthy enough to be in there. But being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is not about being a stadium selling out group. It's not about being only a stadium selling out group. And it's not about how many units you sold, how popular you are, as you say. But did your music not just get you on the charts, did it change the world? And we looked at our thing and we didn't have no idea that we did it. We were just having fun being Run DMC. But people say, our music changed the world. Yesterday in the airport, a guy walks up to me, the bell cap, and the, thank you, your music changed the world. And I looked at him and I kept walking. So I guess that's why we got in. No, well, now, I wouldn't have been mad if we didn't. 
Because, like I said, it was just considered huge just to be considered worthy for consideration to go in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I sit here today, and my thing is this. The funniest thing is we used to steal all those artist music you just mentioned. We stole it. We would take the records and sample it and make our own records and put it out and act like we was doing so. And now they want to put us in the same hall with these guys. I don't understand it. Well, I'm keeping it real. I don't understand it, but it's good because people say Run DMC wasn't just a great rap group. Run DMC didn't just sell records and chart and all of that. People say our music did something to the world. Black and white people together. We we took, uh, you know, at you know first hip hop was just so depressing. Meaning it was you know we're life in the ghetto. Every record was it's bad in the ghetto. Life growing up in the ghetto. Ghetto one, ghetto two. Be in the ghetto. I'm the ghetto man. This and that. <laughs> but we came from a middle suburban middle class area where. We had a great understanding of existence, kind of like a rock and roll. We rock, we rapped about everything, sneakers, Mary, <laughs> it, telling you it's tricky. We put guitars with it. So I guess because we was creatively innovative, and we were a lot of fun, we was worthy enough to be. Hey, let's nominate them. And then had to talk. Yeah, don't you think we really gotta let them in? I was like. Hey, <laughs> Hold on, man. And then I guess there were some people fighting for us. Yeah, but think about what they did. Think about what they did with, yeah, they rappers. Yeah, they rappers, and they sample, and they steal, and they do the, t the typical rap thing. But our sampling and steal and use of, use of rock and roll was kind of like our instrument. It wasn't like we took a rock record and talk, started talking about blunt six fours and I'm gang banging and I'm the boss and this and that and praise me because I sell drugs and I got my gun and I'm going to slap the, you know, the girl, you know, the, the H word and the B word. We was rapping about, you know, positivity. Be cool. Go to school. Don't mess with drugs and thugs and you'll be cool. I'm DMC in a place to be the king of rock. We had the balls. I think this is why we got it because we had his, his rich. We had the balls to say we're the kings of rock. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who the hell these guys think they in? Just with that. Think about that. We had the ball. We didn't say the kings of rap. We didn't say the kings of rap. The rappers was the easy thing. We're the kings of rock. We stepped on Michael Jackson's glove. And the king of rock, baby, we pulled the plug on Jerry Lee Lewis. I remember that. We video. said it's not Michael Jackson and this is not Thriller. We put the hat on the Beatles and said there's three of us and we're not. God, these guys have balls. <laughs> So we got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because we had the attitude. We're, we're here with uh, Daryl DMC, the Daniels. Wow, there he goes. a great answer to a simple question. I'm going to ask you another question. Uh -huh. Obviously, since I announced you were coming on the show, ton of emails, and I'm sure you get asked this question yep. every <clears throat> single day. And I apologize, but we could get it out to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Will Run DMC ever do another show? My management said, don't say no. What my original <laughs> my management said, don't say no, cause if you hold out long enough, D, the checks will get really big. But I don't do what I do for money. My thing, first of all, the first thing that I said was this. Do you want to see me and Run on stage doing that Run DMC thing without Jay? And people think about it and go, nah, yeah, you know, what? but it could be now. What if they did that video thing like they did with Natalie Cole and her father or they've done with Elvis where Jay's Everybody in the background? Everybody brings that up. Everybody brings that up. Because the technology is so good. Is that exactly, something you guys would consider? Exactly, exactly. But I don't want to just be another rap group coming back. You want to have new music? And I want to do it. Like, I'll do it if it's a total different reincarnation and presentation. Live band. And if you're not going to give me, I just saw a H H D concert of rolling stones and i don't know and this has nothing to do with ego people it has nothing to do with ego it has something to do with potential and desire if it ain't gonna be what the rolling stones do now because i am not just a rapper y'all know who rappers because they write right i'm a rock and roll hall of fame inductee king of rock and roll you're not looking at just dmc the guy that may rap i am dmc the king of rock i'm a rock star when you say mick jagger and you say stephen tyler and you say bono you gotta say run and d we're yeah. completely different from you know all due respect eminem jay-z Lil wayne what we did and what we do has to be presented on a level so that all the generations can understand tricky and walk this way and stuff like that. So to make a long story short, to get me to put the the, the Batman suit back on, <laughs> you know, the black leather and a hat, and to come out there with Run, Reverend Run, who's a reverend now. See, I'm a rocker, guys. They asked me D. Ice T asked me D. What are you, rapper MC? I'm a rocker. 
I can say that now. You know, when a baseball player signs an autograph after getting inducted, he puts H O F. What did he up with the other H O F? Listen, I never won a Grammy. We was the first to be nominated for a Grammy, and they had to create a category because of me. So I don't need the Grammy because all the other rappers <laughs> got them because of me. But you know, realistically saying, it has to be a huge. It has to be bigger than just me and Run getting back together. Because I'm a guy about the music. So in a check has to be really big. Like, what would you give Eminem and Jay-Z and Kanye? You got to give that to me and Run and whoever's going to be running around with us. Like, my five. thing is this. Exactly. Times five. Exactly. So we're, there's a possibility we're here that at, I'll do it. We're here at DMC. Amazing stuff. So, mm -hmm. as you were just talking about being the king of rock and all stuff, you got a new song out, Rock Solid, that yes. I was listening to the other night, mm -hmm. which is amazing, which actually tells that story. Ex you, yes, exactly. So Everything I don't know if you did that intentionally, spoke. but you've just set up the next song. Tell us who plays on this song, Rock Solid. Well, this record is produced by Jared Lee Goslin. He's out of L.A. He produced Macy Gray. He produced records for the new Sublime and the new singer Rome. He produced for India Ivory. He produced for a bunch of people. He produced for D12 out in Detroit. And on this song is his band. And it's his girlfriend, his, his fiance actually singing. So Jared Lee singing produced the it. She's the singer. It's like King of Rock with a chorus. And it's me rapping about... What am I rapping here? It's We're going to play it. It's, 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 you know, it's basically me rapping about, yeah, nobody's better than me. Well, it's, a, it's a great song. And this will be the first time it's ever been played on the radio, right? This is the first time it's played on the radio. It's the first single off the new album that's getting ready to come change music again. I can't wait for it. This is DMC's brand new world premiere. Rock the song Solid. 1019 RXP.